Source, Thrillist Note. Please read my initiation report for further details about the company and the valuation. To my surprise, Amira Nature Foods, Anfi, reported FY 2017 results. I have tried several times to contact the company unsuccessfully. Regardless, in this article, I will discuss four relevant items that investors should question themselves before considering investing in Anfi stock. Those are, the operational results, the share exchange for the remaining 19.6% of Amira India, the CEO debt guarantees the shares compensation plan operational results, the income statement, you can read the full company report in this link. But in a nutshell, the results seem good. Revenues increased by 12% or 17 mm USBQOQ. The increase in revenue is due to an increase in institutional sales and prices of basmati rice and specialty rice both in India and internationally. International sales increase was mainly due to increase in institutional sales and prices of basmati rice and specialty rice. In India, the increase was largely driven by increased industry-wide selling prices and the positive impact of the appreciation of the Indian rupee against the USD. Basmati price rupees, quintal source, Bloomberg spot Indian rupee source, Bloomberg costs of goods sold including the change in inventory increased 14% or 17 mm USD. The increase was expected reflecting high input costs of primarily patty and later stage rice. As I mentioned in my initiation article, this is a margin game as farmers would adjust their asking price to this spot market. This can be observed as the margin stayed constant at 12%. Freight, forwarding and handling expenses declined considerably from 1.3 m in 4Q16 to 0.4 k in 4Q17 as more of the sales were conducted under the FOB basis, in case you are not familiar with FOB, this is extracted from Wikipedia. Means that the seller pays for transportation of the goods to the port of shipment, plus loading costs. The buyer pays the cost of marine freight transport, insurance, unloading, and transportation from the arrival port to the destination. Source, FOB, Shipping, Wikipedia, Source, FY 2017 Results Financing Cost Increased 1.3 M 4Q17 Compared to 4Q16 An increment of 1.1 mm USD in debt and the higher cost of the debt were the reasons. All the debt is short-term with floating interest rate, a pretty expensive type of debt. I think Anfi has a lot of opportunities to enhance this cost by using other financing sources and reducing the cost of this debt, as I will detail later in this article. Source, FY 2017 results net profit increased almost 900,000 United States dollars however EPS declined 2 cents to 26 cents due to the shares issued under the incentive plan which I explain further down in the article. Source, FY 2017 results the balance sheet source, FY 2017 results inventories increased by 7 OMM USD QOQ. Basmati rice is stored for a year, this provides the rice its special characteristics. The business itself is intensive in working capital. This increase is consistent with their interest in growing revenues leveraging this strong industry outlook for the next couple of years. Anfi seems to be trying to optimize its working capital without any material success. For example, the 2 1 mm reduction in trade receivables was offset by the same 2 1 mm increase in prepayments. This strategy has an obvious effect on cash consumption, in fact, cash have to 8 mm in the last 9 months. Certainly, if Anfi wants to increase its working capital to pave the road for future growth, I believe that their current strategy is not going to work going forward. They need a more stable and cheaper source of working capital financing.
first, they could start by tightening their payment terms. Trade receivables have declined from 209 MMUSD to 188 MMUSD or from 137 days to 110 days which is a good first step but still if they adopt a 90-day policy they could save 3-4 MMUSD, for a 60-day policy they could save a whopping 8-5 MM in working capital. Finally, depending on the factoring rates, it may be a possibility for Anfi to perform factoring on their receivables if it is deemed cheaper than the 15% rate on its current working capital facility. Another, source of financing would be to extend the payment to suppliers from the current 13 days to 30 to 90 days. Most of Anfi suppliers are local farmers with limited capacity to finance their clients. However, Anfi could sponsor its suppliers to do factoring. That way the supplier could be paid instantly, after discounting the investor implied interest rate, and Anfi could extend its payment terms without affecting the farmers. If Anfi takes payables to 30 days, it could save 2-5 mm and if they extended it to 90 days, they could save 1-1-2 mm. the savings generated could be used to pay down some if not all the debt. However, if Anthe believes this is difficult, another path would be to issue a fixed coupon bond. But to obtain a good interest rate and enough interest in the bond deal by investors, Anthe needs to improve its communication to the capital markets. I found 24 non-financial companies operating in India with a rating of BB to BB that had USD debt. The highest interest rate is 6.8%. If Anfi still wants to issue INR debt, the premium would be around 5% according to the 10-year bond differential resulting in a bond of 11.8% in local currency, still cheaper than the current 15%. Yield to worst of selected Indian bonds BB to BB Source Bloomberg Indian Government 10-year bond Source Bloomberg Share Exchange for remaining stake of Amira India and fee is exchanging 7,005,434 shares for the remaining 19.6% of Amira India. I was hoping for this to happen for a while as it would simplify the structure and avoid any appearance of conflict of interest. Just as a reminder, the remaining 19.6% was owned personally by key management personnel, mainly Karen Chanana. But the second good news is that the transaction appears to be beneficial for current and fee shareholders. According to my math below, exchanging the 19.6% of Amira India for 7,005,434 implies a 23% higher price resulting in a 3.8% benefit post-exchange. That is assuming the terms are not changed. CEO debt guarantee There is lots of noise that management is manipulating and fee results such as revenues and inventories, more details explain in the risks section, so they could close the company at a low price, a risk that is not far-fetched. But, a sign of good faith was that the CEO is personally guaranteeing the entire debt of 239 MMUSD. That guarantee is worth peanuts if Karen Chan on AS net worth is less. I have been trying to find search online and through some local contacts and haven't he got any color regarding his net worth besides Anfi stocks. Source, FY 2017 Comedy Results Shares Compensation Plan A warning sign which needs closer attention is the share-based compensation plan. The first questionable item is the increment in the share-based compensation since 2016 representing a 7% dilution per year. Source, FY 2017 Company Results Furthermore, this month, they have eliminated the compensation committee. What does it mean? More heavy dilution coming next? Source, FY 2017 Company Results Valuation My valuation of Envy has not changed from my initiation report with a target of $11 per share. 
the main assumptions are based on improvements on working capital management, recovery and gross margin to historical levels, industry growth of 2%, a small decline in prices and a gain in market share, dot all shown in detail in the tables below. Source authors estimates below are the resulting financial statements. Source authors estimates in addition, and fee is trading at 1.75 x EBIT and 0.5 x book, multiples only reasonable for distressed companies of frauds. Below is an exercise of the theoretical of EBIT that should trade a company with certain economics. As you can see the multiple ranges from 3.4x to 12x based on the scenario, even in the worst case scenario, the stock would be significantly higher. I believe the fair multiple is somewhere around the base scenario of 7.4x. Source authors estimates based on the DCF assumptions above, the row would incrementally increase reaching 13.2% in 2024 and the cost of equity would decline gradually to under 10%. It is hard to justify the current 0.5x book multiple with a row higher than cost of equity. Source authors estimates risks The five main risks that I see surrounding this investment opportunity are, faith in the accounting books, previously, Anfi was accused of cooking its books for example by overstating its revenues, full details of the class action suit of 2015 can be found here. Since then, the suit was settled and there is no more noise. It would help if Anthe would open its financials better to us and avoid further rumors of improper accounting. For example, it could open the composition of the inventories. Interest rates in India, all of Anthe debt is floating in short term, a terrible combination especially in an increasing interest rate environment. Cash and growth strategy, Anthe has 8 mm in cash. They declare that cash is used to finance working capital, with the current policy, I struggle to see how they could finance the growth of the company. If their policy is not changed or working capital is not optimized, I expect growth to stagnate or to be costly by incurring more short-term debt at higher interest rates, a risky and unsustainable strategy. Further dilution of shareholders, as mentioned above, the minority shareholders have been diluted aggressively in the past two years and we have seen how this is affecting EPS, declining EPS despite net income increasing. There is a risk that dilution rate increases especially now that the compensation committee has been eliminated. Taking the company private, along the same line as the previous risk factor, every quarter the controller will have more control over Anfi thanks to the generous share-based incentive plans. CEO could decide to take out the company at the current share price around $2.30 and then perform all the recommendations in this article to increase the value to $11. Catalysts more significant than changes in the industry fundamentals, the two main catalysts that I see are regarding financing and enhancing the communication with the market. If those are enhanced, Anfi could easily be a 4 by minus 5 x bagger. However, if the company is not what we expect from the numbers, it is worth zero. Swim with caution. I believe that most likely these two catalysts will happen in tandem. That is, in order to get better financing, Anfi management may decide to issue a bond requiring to improve its communication with the market. As for timing, if they keep the same pace of working capital growth, I expect they would need to do something before the end of the year. Net, net and be surprised everyone releasing quarterly results. The results were good showing stable margins and revenue growth. On the balance sheet, they are still financing working capital with expensive short-term debt. I expect working capital needs to increase and if they do not change their strategy, they might get in trouble. 
The best way is for them to reopen their communication with the market which can provide them with better financing options. Also, the share dilution is significant and there is a risk it will increase after the elimination of the Compensation Committee. It is no surprise that the stock is trading at such a discount to its DCF fair value in its theoretical fair multiples. There are many risks surrounding Anfi but, in my opinion, the deep discount and asymmetric risk reward profile justifies the risk. Disclosure, I am, we are long Anfi. I wrote this article myself, and it expresses my own opinions. I am not receiving compensation for it other than from Seeking Alpha. I have no business relationship with any company whose stock is mentioned in this article. Additional disclosure, if you enjoyed this article, you could read my previous articles on my profile. These are good examples of the type of research we do at Red Fox Capital EIRL www.redfoxcapital.cl